Hi, I'm Jeffrey Wood. In this video, what we are going to do is we're going to go through and set up, do some of the general settings uh, that I use. Uh, I mentioned it, I think, in the first, very first video, but not the last one. This this blog would appear to you that I did not put a lot of thought into it, and that's true. As I said uh, in another video, I set this one up out of nostalgia, and because it gives me something I can set up and show you the steps. If I was going to go into this seriously, uh, I would have done a lot of keyword research and niche selection and, and things to make sure that this was something to go into. Um, the, as I've said, the difference between setting up a blog for your own personal interests and setting one up for marketing purposes are pretty much the same. It's just when you do your keyword research, a marketer will look for buying keywords. Um, so I'm taking this more from the aspect of someone who's just setting up a blog uh, as opposed to setting one up who wants to make money. That being said, I have done a little keyword research, but not a lot. Don't know what I'm going to do with the blog. Uh, I don't know if I'll even keep it. I may sell it, auto blog it, I may just shut it down after I'm done with the videos. I, I really don't know. The purpose of this is not to show you how to select a proper niche. This is assuming you already know. Um, if you're interested in knitting cat sweaters, this is it. If you're interested in setting up how to uh, sell golf widgets, this is it. It's just if you're planning on selling something, I'm making the assumption you've already done your research. Uh, I may go back in another video and, and fix that, but or not fix it, but show you how to do it. But I didn't do it for this blog because, again, that was not the point of this blog. This is just showing you the steps you go through. Anyway, now where we left off was, and I didn't do it in the last video, and I didn't think about that till I had stopped the video, is I did not show you how to get rid of this meta section down here, which you don't want. What you do is you come under Appearances and go to Widgets. Now widgets are the things you do that will show up here. So all these things, recent posts, recent comments, archives, categories, those are all widgets. Now if you notice, you've got these sections. So here is your available widgets, and that's these two columns. You have inactive widgets. Now inactive widgets are widgets that you've used and you're not using right now, but you don't want to get rid of the settings and whatnot, so you put them down there. Uh, if you're, say, doing some testing on response rates on something, you might put it down here for the moment until you finish your testing and then you pick the one you like the best. Uh, or for whatever reason, maybe it was just a lot of work and you put it there just in case, well, if I ever do it again, I don't want to go through the work. Sidebar. This is the stuff that's going to show up here. I don't know how well you can see that. And here is some stuff you can have it before the post. So that'd be like up in here. Before the post content would be here. Uh, after the post content and after the post. So it's the same thing after this and down here. Uh, in the last video I deleted this. So this is what you see if you went to it because I have not put in any posts or pages. Anyway, meta. You actually have that as a section right here. And so in this theme, I just pull it out. You know, I, I do a single left click and pull it out. Uh, I assume it works that way on a Mac. I don't know. Anyway.
way you can put widgets here in your header and in case you don't know that's this part up here oh let's refresh this so see it still has recent comments archives and categories now in some of the older things I've worked with um, there would be nothing in the sidebar and so the way to get rid of the default stuff was to actually come and grab one of these and it's just again it's a single left click and you pull it over the page so in this case it's pages and I'll put it here under the search and then what it would do is anything you pulled over it would, it would put here and it would get rid of everything else so it's just a default in case you didn't do anything um, I suppose that works it was a good idea um, because then you could come into your front page here and log in and whatnot but that's also a security risk so the newer themes that I've been running into they come with some default ones and you can just pull them out the ones you don't want in any case um, I don't have any pages but this is where it would be yeah it's not going to show me anything oh I'm um, up here you're, I'm still logged in over here so of course I can do my editing and stuff here and this this is in case you're doing a single tab which most people would do uh, you can go back in you can preview it and then go from here and go right into what it is you want to do again I do the two tabs so I can work in one and then I can just refresh the page on the other one and see what it is I'm doing okay so <clears throat> Let me put something over there. Uh, oh, some arbitrary text. So in this widget, I drug over under the pages a, a place where I can put a title. Actually, that's what I'll do. Here are my pages. And you can sort by page title, page order, page ID. Uh, you can exclude certain pages by typing it in here. You can delete the widget. You, it doesn't really delete it. See, it's still over here. This gets rid of it here. You can close it or you can save it. If you close it, none of these changes are saved. So we'll save those. And we'll go over here and we'll refresh. For some reason, to, oh, because I'm on a, I'm not on the main screen. Click here. At least I think. Yeah, it's because I, I don't have any pages. I think. So let's get that out. Actually, I'm gonna get rid of all of these. I'm going to leave the search and at this point the reason I'm doing this is more just to show you uh, when I get in and do it myself I'm not stopping to think about what I'm doing I just I just do it if that makes sense like I said I, I, I can do or I can explain but trying to do both at the same time doesn't work here is the text title here is my I was going to type text but that's okay I've never used the automatically add paragraphs try it if you like it great say so click on save I should just click on refresh ah there it goes here's the text title and here's my text so it takes your title and puts it in this nice um, and this changes depends on uh, from theme to theme. I've had some where it's just puts the text here in bold, and that's it. I, I kind of like this little box. Anyway, getting back to to the settings. 
So you go here, oops, under general settings. So settings, general. Here's your site title and your tagline. And you may recall from the last video, I typed it in when I was doing the theme and it changed it here. If I change it here, it would change it there and it changes it on the blog. Um, there's the WordPress address, so that's your main URL of the WordPress and the site address. In this case, they're the same. Had I installed the WordPress under a subdirectory like golfcourse.yard, uh, golfcourseyard.com forward slash blog, that's what it would say here golfcourseyard.com forward slash blog. With, so it just reminds you that that's where it's installed in so you don't forget. Uh, the email address which you can change. Membership. Anyone can register or if you're setting up a membership site or a site that you don't want people to log in and comment on, uh, I'll leave that unchecked. At this point I'm going to let anyone register. New user default role. Subscriber, contributor, author, editor, administrator. Leave it on subscriber. Uh, you don't want new users to have an admin. You can go in and change individual users later. So if you have someone you partner with. Uh, time zone. Now this is the current date and time that I'm doing this video. Um, it is actually almost 6.30 in the morning. Uh, the people I live with tend to be noisy so I try to get up early to do these videos. I know from past experience that should be my time zone. However, if you don't know your time zone or you don't know that, you can pick a city that's closest to your time zone. So in this case I'm in Pacific uh, standard time. So let's see, I'm scrolling too fast. The light's kind of washing out the screen, so it's a little harder for me to see. It's a very old laptop. Asia, Arctic. And it's alphabetical, so really what I should be looking for is either Portland or, oh, Los Angeles works because they're in the same time zone I'm in. Anyway, so now all the times on the blog is going to show up in the proper time zone. You can change the date to whatever suits your fancy or a custom if you want. The time format. For some reason I like military time. The week starts on, you can choose what day of the week. Um, I used to change it to Sunday because that's always been considered the start of the week anymore. I leave it on Monday and there's no specific reason other than it's just one less thing. Click on Save Changes. Now had I changed stuff in here I'd go and refresh this and you can see the changes but I didn't change anything that you would see over here. Then I go down to the, now you see it's taken what was the sub-menu over here and just put it down here. So I go into writing, formatting. Convert emoticons to graphics on display. I leave that. Uh, WordPress should correctly invalid, invalidly nested. It's supposed to correct that. I'm not entirely sure what it even is. Um, I got out of doing that stuff a long time ago and I don't keep up. Most of the def most of the settings I leave on default. I'll tell you now. If you want a default post category, and you've already put some in, you can change it. Um, so, for example, if you go up here to posts and categories, and I do this anyway, so I'm going to add a category. Here's your my existing category and it's uncategorized. So when you do a post and you have the option of putting what category it goes in, if you select nothing, this is what is filed and there's uncategorized. I don't like the name. I'm going to, I could add a name in this
this case I'm just going to change this name from un uncategorized to general. Now as it says, the name is how it appears on your site, and the slug is a URL friendly version of the name. Lowercase, only letters, numbers, and hyphens. So I could go general if you know you you had a reason to have more than one name. Uh, for example, if I had a name on types of catfish, I would put types of catfish like you would expect here, and then types dash of dash catfish. And in the video where I go over the categories, you'll hear all this again, but that's all right. You can have categories being a parent, and you can have subcategories. So on my saltwater blog, I have like corals. And then under corals, you can have hard corals and soft corals. So the corals would be a parent category, and soft corals and hard corals would be uh, a child category or a subcategory. And the corals would be the parent. And you can put a description here. Some themes show them, some themes don't. In this case, I think general is pretty explanatory enough, so I'm not going to do that. Click on update. Now, um, go back to settings, go back to writing. Anyway, had I added a second category instead of changing that one, see now my default post for I click here and it do a drop down of the different categories. Default post format. Standard, aside, chat, gallery, link, image, quote. Um, so that's the format you're doing if it's of your posts. I've never really played around with it. This is how I would do it. Uh, I go to wordpress.org wordpress and start looking around on what that means. Or, and this is more likely because this is how I like to do things, I would probably do my two tabs and click the different formats and do some refreshing and if I didn't see if I couldn't figure out from that what the differences were then I'd go and do research either way uh, press this press this is a bookmarklet it's a little app and let's grab this to the web I don't use this you can that's up to you you can write your posts and send them to your blog through email. Uh, I have experimented with that. It works. I don't usually do that. This is where you would put in that information. Update services. So when you publish a new post, the WordPress goes to these update to, goes to these services and sends out a little ping, and that tells these services that uh, you have a new blog. I have a whole list of things that I copy and paste into here, and then I click on Save Changes. Under Reading, you can change how many blog pages show up the most. I like to do somewhere between three to five. I don't. It's up to you. But if, since I do just the little summaries, I prefer to show a few and not just one. In the syndication feed, show the most recent 10 items. I usually make those match. For each article in the feed, you can show the full text or a summary. I do it as I do a summary. I don't really use RSS, so I don't know what the preference is. I just assume that they'll want a little blurb to see what it is, and if they want to read the full thing, they'll go see it. Uh, if you know differently please let me know. Uh, search engine visibility. Discourage search engines from indexing this site. And it's up to the search engines to honor this site. I don't know why you wouldn't want to have the search engines find your site unless you know it's a really private site and you want it spread by word of mouth more than anything. Um, 
sounds kind of shady to me, but I suppose there might be some legitimate uses for it. Any color, any case, save changes. Okay, that was the reading. Discussion. That's for comments and whatnot. So your default article settings are, you can attempt to notify any blogs linked from this article. So if you link to another blog from a post, it'll send a notice to that blog. I have heard leave it and don't leave it, it's up to you. Allow link notifications from other blogs, pingbacks and trackbacks, so you can get notified if another blog links to you or not. And allow people to post comments on new articles. If you don't want them to do that, uncheck it. And of course those settings can be overridden for individual articles. Other comment settings. Comment author must fill out name and email. And I like to, to help cut down a little bit on spam, you have to register and log in to comment. Automatically close comments on articles older than 14 days. You can change that to however many days you want. Uh, if you don't check that, it doesn't close. It leaves them open. I've gone both ways. On a blog that I'm not when it comes to internet marketing I've tried almost everything so at one point I was doing auto blogs and I wasn't interested in bothering with comments so I closed the comments after like a day enable threaded or nested comments you can go five levels deep you can change that um, so if you're replying to a comment it kind of makes it into and then you could reply to the comments comment. Anyway, break comments into pages with 50 top level comments per page and the last page displayed by default. You could so last comment first or change it so the first comment is first. Um, if you want your comments to go into pages instead of one long scroll, that's up to you. Comments should be displayed with the older comment at the top of each page. So in addition to the last and the first, on each page you can do older and newer. Email me whenever anyone posts a comment or whenever comment is held for moderation and again that's up to you. If it's an unmoderated blog what I do is typically on a if a person has done a few posts where they've been trustworthy, then I let them kind of go unsupervised, but until then I like to supervise what's going on. Before a comment appears, a comment must be manually approved, comment author must have previously approved comments. Whatever you like. Hold a comment in the queue if it contains two or more links. People who spam tend to put lots of links. When a comment contains any of these words in its content name, the URL, the email, or the IP will be held in moderation queue. One word or one IP per line. It will match Word, so press will match WordPress, or inside Word. So, for example, if it contains triple X, if you want to get make sure. So basically, anything that matches in this list is automatically going to be held for moderation no matter what. So you can put IP addresses, individual words, and whatnot, then uh, a comment blacklist. So when a comment contains any of these words in the content, uh, it'll be marked as spam. So the difference between the comment moderation and the blacklist is this will automatically go to, to spam, whereas this will be held in moderation for you to decide and I have a list that I copy and paste into here. Avatars. Show avatars. Avatars are the little icons right here. Um, you don't have to allow them and you can change it from Mr. Man Blank to the Gravatar logo if people have created Gravatar. Uh, so the def there's a default I experiment is kind of an up to you and save changes. 
Actually, I'm going to change that. You can change the images of thumbnails and organize. When you upload files, you can organize them into month and year based folders. That's up to you, whichever is easier. I rarely mess with those. Permalinks, however, are another matter. Now, a permalink, I'll shrink this down so you can see it. A permalink is what you see here. Is the URL. So when you go to, I should have left the default post. Hold on here. I don't know if I can undo it. In the trash. You can delete them permanently or restore them. So, on refresh, there's my default one, and I'm going to delete it later, but I need something for demonstration. Right now, what you see is Golf Course Yard, the date, the year, the month, and the day, and the post title. back down here to settings, permalinks. That's what the day and name is set to. If you go to the default, save the changes, come here and refresh. I was trying to refresh something that didn't exist anymore. Anyway, you see it's the golf course yard forward slash question mark p equals one. I think that's page, not sure. Anyway, it gives you the same thing. So you can have it the default, you can have the day name, the month and the name, the numeric, the post, just the post name, or the custom structure. Now the custom structure is what I usually use. And what I do is forward slash. Now I usually uh, remember it wrong, but it'll go post underscore ID percent forward slash post underscore name percent forward slash. Um, oh, optional. If you'd like, you may enter custom structures for your category and URL tags. So, again, it's kind of the same thing as for your posts, except you can do it for your categories and tags as well. Save changes. Here, I'll go back. Oh, and your categories any categories you put in will show up here in this particular theme. Click on that. So the problem with my custom structure is that I put it in wrong. 
So it's forward slash percent post underscore ID percent forward slash percent post name one word percent forward slash. Anyway, if we come here and refresh, and we click on this, you'll now see that here it has that one from the, you know, the question mark P equals one. It has that one and it has name. I like this for a couple of reasons. One is if all a person does is type in that, it'll bring up that actual post. The other reason I like this format is, say for example, um, excuse me, say for example, here in a year or two, I forget that I had a blog post called Hello World, so I create another blog post and call it Hello World. Well, the actual title is, this one will be golfcourseyard.com forward slash one forward slash hello world as you see here. The next one would be dot com forward slash whatever the number is, you know, 3,357 forward slash hello world. So that helps uh, not only the search engines, but it helps you uh, because if a person is typing it in and they see that you have in their search list that they have two different posts, they can tell by the number that they are indeed two different posts and not the same post listed twice. Uh, and then they'll, you know, it doesn't take too much deductive reasoning to realize that the 357 should be a newer post or maybe an older post if they don't know WordPress, but anyway, that's what I like the best about it, and I put that on pretty much all my blogs, so that, like I said, it, it's just got some advantages. I'm going to end this video here because it's already getting pretty long, and that is most of the settings. From this point on, everything else is uh, customizing, adding plugins that I like. Uh, I'm going to leave that theme, at least for now. I might find one that's more appropriate for gardening um, and going through and setting up other things like that. But at this point, all your customizing is pretty much done. We've got the theme, which is going in and showing posts and whatnot. So if you would like to, if there's a specific aspect that you would like to know, um, leave me a comment, shoot me an email. I will have my non-existent virtual assistant take a look at it. Uh, I'll get back to you as best I can. Anyway, uh, again, this is Jeffrey Wood. I hope this has been helpful for you.